right? You can see that that's right. Uh, and I'm going to hit start streaming. And good. All right, your event is starting. could hear myself there. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Good morning to a live uh, special Coding Train episode. Uh, this episode, uh, episode, I don't know if that's the right word. This event, this live stream is sponsored by Spell. Um, you can go to spell.run slash coding train. Uh, you know, uh, if, you ha if you've been paying attention to the last stuff on the channel for the last few weeks, there's an intro to Spell the platform. Uh, Yining Shi was here couple weeks ago and did a tutorial about how to train a style transfer model. And today we have another guest standing right over there, uh, Nabil Hussain, who is going to show how to train a LSTM model and talk a little bit about what that is. Um, and then look at, so train that model with TensorFlow and then download that model from the Spell platform, which is a cloud computing service, and use it with ML5 to generate new texts. So what other things do I want to say? Oh, thank you to White Coat Captioning. Uh, there should be real-time captions, right? Uh, saying things like, what did I say last time? Mango, blueberry, banana, whatever I say appears below me, hopefully. Um, and um, let me just tell you a little bit about Nabil. Nabil is a Brooklyn-based artist, a web developer, uh, an alumni of NYU, I just learned today. Uh, Nabil is currently uh, working and teaching at the School for Poetic Computation and is a graduate of the School for Poetic Computation, which I've talked about, uh, independent, artist-run collective school uh, here in New York City, which is awesome. You should check out their website. Um, and you can find out more about Nabil and the work he's doing and different projects he's involved with at his website, which is also linked in this video's description. Now, right now in the video's description, it's pretty bare. It's just Nabil's um, bio and a, a few words about what we're going to do today. But uh, after this ends, the archive, if you're watching this later, the archive of this will have all the links to all the different things he's going to show. All right, so I actually usually keep a, like a live chat here to make sure like everything is working and I realize I don't have that there. So I'm gonna bring Nabil on and I'm gonna go check the live chat. If you're watching this live, please let me know if there are any technical issues that we can fix and work out before um, Nabil gets started with the tutorial. Anything I missed? Okay, so I'm gonna bring Nabil in. Uh, we're gonna awkwardly switch places. I will watch the chat. If you have questions, post them there. I will collect them and, and you know, I'll interrupt if there's something important, but I'll, we'll also I'll save them and ask them at the end. Okay, thanks, and here we go. Welcome, All right. Nabil. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Nabil. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for this great intro, and um, thanks, Phil, for paying me to make this video or to do this live stream. Um, so I have here kind of an outline of uh, what I plan to go through. Um, so I guess I'll start by go ahead and introducing myself. So I already said hi, I'm Nabil. Um, I live in Brooklyn. I'm a freelance technologist, educator, do some other things. Um, again, thank you, Spell, for sponsoring this video. Um, so this live stream is about how to train an LSTM model um, using the Spell platform, so like on some remote sh machines somewhere, uh, and then how to use that model that we've trained um, using a library called ml5.js, which is a browser-based front-end library for um, using machine learning models. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this video, I've practiced most of this, I'm gonna try to do a few things uh, truly live for you here today, um, is I'm gonna kind of extend a project that I did actually at the School for Product Computation, which Dan mentioned um, last summer. Um, so the project, I can actually just show you the version of it that's actually live on the web. Um, so this I trained using a Markov model. Um, so this is a rhyme generator based on the lyrics of uh, one of my favorite MCs, uh, MF Doom. Um, so every time I click this rhyme button, it will generate um, random rhymes patterned on uh, his lyrics. So um, yeah, I'm, I mean this this video isn't really about that project. It's you know about how to use Spell, but. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, and the, the code is live if you want to, uh, or, or the code is public on GitHub if you want to check it out uh, at some point. Um, I used a library called Pronouncing, which was created, uh, and I, I've been contributed to many people, but I'm, I know uh, a lot of work was done on it by Allison Parrish. Um, and I used that library to actually generate um, a pair of rhyming words, and I trained the models backwards on the input text um, so that I could start by putting in the rhyming words um, generate kind of the rest of the sentence going from the end to the beginning Hold and then sorry. reverse all of it. Apparently there's some static in the audio. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry about no, that. That's all right. <laughs> let, me see, let me see if I can hear it here. Okay, can testing, testing. Uh, should I move the mic or? 
Is it like in a bad spot? Or? Yeah, no, see, unclip it for a second. Okay. See if it's like. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, everybody. We will iron this out. Yeah, because it seems. Just uh, everybody watching, I'm gonna like shut the lights. Oh wait, no, I can. Oh wait, talk okay. again. Uh, testing, testing. Yeah, I don't hear any static anymore. Oh, audio's good. Okay, yeah, cool. So try putting it back on. All right. Uh, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's good. Cool. Okay, uh, so should I start from the beginning? Or uh, you, know, oh. you don't have to start from the beginning. You can you can pick up from where you left off. We're gonna make we'll probably make it now. We definitely will make an edited version <laughs> of this later. So uh, anybody who wants to watch this back later will not. I'm like talking to the camera here. Will not get. Um, will not have to watch that part. Um, but I think you can you can you can go back a couple sentences. Okay, or sure. But um, and then uh, in the chat, please let me know again if the if the audio if the static starts again. Cool. cool. Um, All right, uh, so yeah, so uh, like I was just mentioning, so this video is mainly about training an LSTM model using the Spell platform and then using it in the browser via a library called ml5.js. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of build on a project that I did last summer at the School for Poetic Computation. Um, and the way that that project works is uh, there's a bunch of random, it'll generate random rhymes right now this what I have live on the web, what I'm actually showing from my website is based on uh, a Markov model. So it's not really machine learning. It's just probabilistic predicting the next character based on the previous ones. Um, and you can click this all day and it'll keep coming up with more and more rhymes. Um, yeah, so to get that to work, I use a library called pronouncing, uh, train the models backwards, and then flip the output at the end. I'm so sorry to interrupt one oh. more time because the uh, capture that no longer has audio because I so. Let me just, oh, okay. let me just uh, fix that. Sorry, everybody. This is like, uh, this is how it usually is. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to, um, okay, so I'm going to hang up here. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to try to uh, call the, uh, set. We have a separate Skype connection going with the captioner. Um, how do I put this back? Let's try this. Um, so we're going to reconnect. Uh, testing, can you hear me? There we go, she's got it. Okay. Cool, all right. Sorry, hopefully this will be the last time. Cool, well, it's, not, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was just uh, talking about uh, the video in general, as you know, is about training an LSTM model using Spell and then using it in the browser via a library called ml5.js. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so the next thing. Um, so I'm not really going to talk too much in this video about like the theory of neural networks or what is an LSTM really, but I feel like I should probably say something. Um, so first of all, LSTM stands for long short term memory. Uh, it's a specific type of recurrent neural network. Uh, and what is useful about recurrent neural networks or RNNs compared to some other types of neural networks um, is the way that their architecture includes loops. Uh, and that can be useful for kind of uh, keeping data around in the network, so to speak, which is very useful for applications involving uh, natural language, human language, um, because uh, context matters so much in language. Um, like predicting the next character or the next word might be, uh, might you, might you might get a much better prediction if you actually remember what was said even some while ago, may maybe like much earlier in a long sentence. Um, so. I have a few uh, quick references here, which by now are a little old, but this is, these are um, what I read to like learn a little bit about uh, recurrent neural networks. So there's this blog post called The Unreasonable Effective of Recurrent Neural Networks. 
And there's this other blog post called uh, Understanding LSTMs, or oh, did I typo this somehow? I must have. Yeah, so I'll fix that. Um, oops. If I can, yeah, called Understanding LSTMs. Um, so yeah, this gives a little bit of overview of kind of the same stuff I was just talking about, right? Humans don't start their thinking from scratch every second. You understand each word based on your understanding of previous words, and that's what we want our network to do as well, which is why we're going to use this LSTM model. Um, and yeah, I know that before I had the chance while preparing for this video to watch a video that Dan made kind of giving an overview of the Spell platform. Um, so that a link to that video will also be added to the video description and you can kind of get into a little bit more depth about um, using Spell. And I'll also mention some things about using Spell as we go through this. Okay, so when you want to do a project like this, um, the first thing that you have to do is get your corpus of data. Um, so in this case, since I was getting uh, song lyrics, I used a site called Genius.com, uh, which you might be familiar with, is a popular lyrics website. I had some other features too, but the main thing I use it for, and I think most people use it for, is reading lyrics. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do everything kind of from scratch, so to speak, so that you should be able to follow along in theory. Um, so what I'm gonna do, this is um, a, repository, uh, a folder that I used uh, to prepare. Um, what I'm gonna do is just make a new folder called spell live stream. And I'm gonna do everything from inside of this folder, which just lives somewhere on my computer. Okay, so right now this folder is empty. Um, and so the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is just clone my generative Doom repository from GitHub. I'm, there's only actually one file in there that I care about. So maybe let me not actually clone the whole repository. Let me just get that one file. Okay, so I'm just going to where, um, uh, where this is, and it's in data. Oh, but did I push it up? I have so many branches here. Okay, why don't I use the one that I have on my computer? Um, so I'm just gonna copy a file that I have on my computer into this folder. Uh, so where was that? In spell demo slash generative doom slash data. I have a file called input.txt that I just moved, that I just uh, brought a copy of into my current directory. Um, and we can just check it out really quickly uh, oops, that's input.txt. So you can see this is just a list of uh, lyrics, okay? Th this is my corpus. And uh, it's worth noting that uh, the data set I'm actually using for this example isn't that big. Uh, we can check the size of it with the command line utility du for disk usage, pass the human readable flag so that we can actually tell how big this file is. And it's about 308 kilobytes. Um, so that's not huge. Normally when, when you're, um, when you're training machine learning models, kind of the more data, the better. Um, but I got all the lyrics that I could find by this artist. This is, this is, the, this is really the most that I could get. Um, so that's what we're gonna use. Um, cool, so it's also worth noting um, that you have to clean the data before you train it. So I can actually go ahead and show, um, I can go ahead and show the code that I used to get these lyrics. I'm not gonna go into full depth, but again, it's on my GitHub if you wanna check it out. Uh, so let's, uh, let's put it over here. Okay. Um, so I happen to do my scraping using Python. Um, you can do this in any language. You can, you can do web scraping using node.js or Ruby or whatever your favorite language is. Um, but I happen to have already used before a Python library called beautiful soup, which is very useful for, uh, web scraping. Um, and so, uh, it so happens that genius.com happens to keep their lyrics, uh, in, like their URLs follow a pattern like this, genius.com slash the name of the artist, which I substituted in here, and the name of the song, which I substituted in here. Uh, and then I use a, another Python library called requests to just go ahead and, and fetch uh, all these different things. Um, so this is the basic idea. I'm not gonna go into full depth, but I just kind of hard coded a lot of names of different um, songs into here. And then I have a main loop, which basically just loops through each artist's name because Doom has actually recorded under many different names, so I can't just use the same artist's name all the time. And then um, the same thing uh, for the albums and then finally the songs in order to go ahead and just uh, fetch all of this data. Um, and 
the thing is that when you just go um, directly like to some um, you know uh, to some lyrics website like when when you fetch the data on the page you end up getting a lot of other data that you don't really care about um, in the HTML and so you have uh, an important step is to clean the data so that when you're training the model you're only training it on the actual corpus that you care about and you're not training it on like the angle brackets of HTML tags or something like that that you don't actually want. Um, so again, uh, I think I have most of that code that I used to clean it on, um, on the GitHub. I think it is theirs. Um, but if not, there are other resources that you can use um, to learn more about data cleaning. Again, this video is really about training machine learning models using Spell and then using them in the browser. Um, so let's get back to that. Uh, yeah, I wanted to mention Project Gutenberg. It's another resource that has lots of uh, free text that's in the public domain that you can just use. Uh, web scraping with Node.js is another resource that I've happened to look at for doing uh, this kind of thing. Um, and so although my script.py uh, file in my generative Doom repository doesn't show this, um, yeah, like I get the original version I kind of um, kept each file, uh, keep, kept each song in its own file of lyrics. Um, but it so happens that the machine, uh, what, what I'm going to show you next, um, works with an input that's just one big input file input.txt, so I just did um, some boring shell script stuff to just concatenate all the files together. And I've already noted that my data set is kind of small, so that's everything that I wanted to say about getting data. Uh, so let's kind of get into the main thing. So I think I already did this part. I already created a new uh, directory for all of this stuff to live in. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and go on to the next step. Um, so it's a good habit, uh, I think, to use uh, virtual env, um, at least with Python 2. I, know, I understand things have kind of moved on a bit with Python 3, but I'm still on the Python 2. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use this virtual env thing to kind of keep my, um, my dependencies isolated, although I think there should actually only be one. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. Uh, so I have some other virtual env active right now, it so happens. I see that from my command prompt uh, over here. So I just ran this command deactivate to get rid of that. I'm just going to clear the screen to make it a little less noisy here. And then what did I want to do? I wanted to create a new virtual env. And what did I want to call it? I wanted to call it spell video virtual env. Okay. Um, so it's setting up a new virtual environment, which lives inside of this folder here. Uh, and the way that you use Python virtual env um, to get it active is, uh, you say, what is it? Spell video virtual env slash bin slash activate. Oh, I have to say source at the beginning. Source, and then the path to um, this activate script. Okay, all right. Um, and now you can see my prompt changed because I have to have my terminal you know, preferences set up that way so that I can remember what virtual env I'm in. Um, okay, so I did that, uh, and oh yeah, I already went and got that input file, um, which I, I, I should probably push it up. I haven't actually um, pushed up to the GitHub like the one the one file version, but um, you know, life is messy. Um, so, but what I am actually going to get the proper version of from GitHub is uh, this repository called Training LSTM. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and clone that, and let's actually. Let's actually go and take a look at that repository in its readme. Uh, oops, I forgot to delete git clone. So let me just copy this and paste it in. Cool. So you can see that this, um, you can see from the description of this repository, training an LSTM network and using the model ML5.js, that it's highly relevant to what we're doing uh, in this video. Um, so the, the directions in this repository's readme uh, are based on what you would want to do if you were training um, the machine learning model locally on your own computer. Um, so if that's what you want to do, you can go ahead and follow this. But since this video is about how to use Spell, um, that's what I'm actually going to do. So I'm not going to follow these uh, directions exactly, but we are going to follow along with certain parts of it. Um, so, okay, so I've already cloned this repository, right? That was the last command that I ran. So I'm going to go ahead and enter into that repository. 
Uh, and then what I want to do is create a directory inside of here called data. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that input.txt file um, into that data directory. Or copy it, rather. I guess I could have deleted it in the other directory, but whatever. OK. Uh, OK, great. So this is the setup. Uh, we have a repository. We have this repository locally that is going to help us train an LSTM network uh, using TensorFlow. And then we're going to, after we've trained the model, we can use it in ML5.js. So we're pretty much done with our setup. Let's get into actually training the model. Uh, so again, this is the link that you can use to sign up for Spell if you haven't already. Uh, it so happens that I have already. So I'm, uh, I should be logged in here. Let me just make sure I haven't been logged out. I haven't. So I'm, I'm in here in uh, spell.run, and it gives me some information about uh, how to install Spell, how to log in with Spell. There's a little quick start guide that you can check out. Uh, those are some of the resources that I used when preparing for this video. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, um, that other uh, training LSTM repository tells you how to run locally. Um, but for us, all we really do need to install is Spell. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with pip install Spell. And it's going to go ahead and fetch uh, Spell and whatever thing Spell depends on from uh, the Python package, PyPy, whatever it's called. It's going to go ahead and just get that. Okay, and then once it's done installing, I'll be able to log in using my username and password, if I can remember it. All right, I can remember it. So you see it greeted me, hello Nabil Hussain, so that's me, so I am logged in as myself. Uh, and if you ever forget who you're logged in is for some reason, um, the spell command has a lot of subcommands, like spell who am I will tell you who you are. Um, but what I'm just going to go ahead and get started with training this model. And the first thing that, I, that we need to do is to upload um, the file to spell. Okay. So what I want to run is this command here, spell upload the path on my local computer of the file. And then I want to give it a name um, of where I'm going to upload it to. Okay, so I just copy paste that command, spell upload my data slash input.txt to uh, this destination. Oh, it's actually going to prompt me for the destination in a minute. Uh, it doesn't want that yet, but it's going to want that momentarily. So let me just say spell upload the name of the file that I want to upload. And now it's asking me for the name for the upload, which I was trying to give a little bit early. Uh, and it tells me that my, the file, this is the path to it on my local computer that I'm typing on right now, will be accessible at upload slash name slash input dot txt. And that's the name, oops, uh, oops, just part of it is the name that I want to put in. So I'm just going to delete the part I don't want and put in, what was it, Nabil spell live stream doom. Okay. Total upload size 307k, the same as what we saw, or at least very close to what we saw when we ran the du command earlier. Uh, and the upload completed. So that's great. Um, so what we're going to do now, this is kind of uh, the most, probably the most complicated command that we're going to run, but it's really the only one. Um, this, is really the, this is really what's saying to go ahead and actually run the Python script that we downloaded from uh, train that training LSTM Git repository. Okay, Py we're going to run that with Python, this train.py script, with the data dir set to what I happen to call uh, data. That's the name of the folder where I put that input.txt. Uh, and I'm going to run it, and I'm going to mount the data, the, I'm going to mount the folder that I had just created by uploading that file as the name data so that it can understand this data directory, okay? So I should get, I think, one error when I do this, and I'll talk about why. Okay, spell run mount slash dash mount upload slash nabil spell doom. Oh, I called it live stream. My notes, I didn't quite update from when uh, 
from when I practiced. So let me go ahead and fix that. Uh, okay, live stream. Okay, so let's try that. And it tells me that there are some untracked files in this repository and they won't be available on this run. Okay, continue the run anyway. No, that's really the file that I care about. Um, so Spell encourages us to, um, to use the Git version control system to make sure that uh, the data that we're training on is checked in and that's very good for reproducibility if we want to go back later and understand like what was going on or what was there. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, and kind of follow the suggested workflow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and git add dot, or I guess I could have git add data, but whatever. Uh, that's the only thing, same effect in this particular case. And I'm going to say add uh, data dot input dot txt file of doom lyrics. Okay. And now having done that, if I run the same command, it won't give me that same warning since uh, the files are now tracked instead of being untracked. Okay. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and start to do this and then I'll go ahead and mention that other thing that I said I was going to mention. So I'm just going to press up a few times to just go back to my history to run the same command again. So I'll run, I'm mounting that data folder that I uploaded to be called data. Uh, oh, I put it in the wrong order. So one thing to mention, I think, is that if you're going to mount the data file, you, didn't a you don't actually have to commit it. Oh. Like it commit because oh, it'll, it'll pull it from there. So oh, okay. you can do either. Oh, I so see. But if you, so if you don't want to upload it with Git, then you can do the mounting thing that you're showing now. I oh, think. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So I'm kind of. So there's more than one way to work with Spell, and I think I, I kind of conflated two of them a little bit. Um, so I, yeah, I didn't actually need to do the Git commit because of the way um, that I'm doing uh, that I'm doing this because I uploaded it before, um, and. That will also kind of give some of the same like reproducibility benefits because Spell will keep a record of what we uploaded, um, but it doesn't hurt to get committed either. Um, so let me just fix that typo. It should be right. in this case, it's such a small file; it doesn't really matter. Yeah. If you're working with like a huge gigabyte file or something, right. you want to upload that separately mm -hmm. uh, without having to like commit it also. Right. Yeah, because Git isn't always the best for dealing with large files, which is why there's you know tools like Spell and tools like what is it Git. Uh, Whatever, there's a bunch of tools. Let's, uh, cool, so let me just go ahead and fix that typo, and I should fix that in my notes as well. It tells me everything is up to date because I did make that git commit, although, uh, like Dan mentioned, I didn't really have to. It tells me it's casting spell number 16, so I happen to have used spell about 15 times before. It tells me I can stop viewing the logs with control C. It tells me it's requesting a machine and building and mounting, and the run is running. It's reading the text file, and it is starting to train the machine learning model and giving me uh, some data about how that training is going in these, um, you know, in these different uh, checkpoints. Oh, there goes the camera. That means oh. 30 minutes has passed. All right. Fix that. Cool. <laughs> All right, and I am back, everyone. Um, so this is still running, and like it told me before, um, I can just get out of the logs in my local terminal with Control C. Um, but this, this is running on a remote machine that Spell has provisioned and set up very nicely for me, so I don't have to worry about it. So I'm not actually stopping uh, the run from happening when I control C, I'm just stopping the logs from appearing in my own terminal. And if I want to check out those logs, I can say spell logs 16, and they'll start appearing again. Um, and there's also some other commands that it told me about, like I, w I could kill it with spell kill whatever, but I don't want to, I'm going to let it keep running. And besides checking out the logs locally with um, spell logs, the name, the number of the run, you could also uh, come over here to the spell uh, in the spell web UI and check out different information about the run in here. But as you may have noticed from this video, I tend to have a preference for the command line, so I'm going to keep doing things mostly that way. Um, cool. So let's see. Oh yeah. So one thing I did want to mention was uh, the parameters, or what sometimes it's called the hyperparameters of the network. Um, so let's just go back to this git readme really quick. Um, so yeah, like I said, th this gives you more information about how you would run it locally, uh, including how you can pass uh, additional flags that I didn't bother passing um, to control more of uh, the characteristics of the network, like uh, its size, how many layers they are, um, the length of the sequence, um, and various other things that you can read more about uh, in this repository. Um, they have here some recommendations for uh, what you might want 
uh, to select for your hyperparameters according to the size of your training data set. Uh, because my file, uh, because my training data set is so small, I decided the defaults are probably fine. Okay, okay, oh yeah, those are kind of the old notes. I already did that part. Oh yeah, and the, the, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the difference between running on CPU versus GPU. Um, so uh, I imagine this might be review for many viewers, but uh, I am a teacher, so I'm always a fan of just reviewing material. Uh, so the CPU is the central processing unit of your computer that um, has maybe a, f a little bit of parallelism, but for the most part um, is best at running things sequentially very fast. Um, and the model of computation is a little bit different from that of a GPU, which at some point stood for graphics processing unit and maybe still does, but maybe that acronym has been retired by now because uh, GPUs actually have uh, very many applications other than graphics, uh, including uh, trading neural networks on text, for example. Um, GPUs, uh, historically, like they got, I think, that name because uh, like each pixel on a screen, for the most part, is independent of each other one, and so can be computed independently. And so a, a GPU is much more highly parallel compared to a CPU. Um, like it's not going to be as fast at completing like you know one single task, um, but it uh, is very good for displaying things on screens, and it also happens to be very good for training um, neural networks. So in the last um, the last command that I ran over here on the command line to train the neural network, um, this is running uh, via a CPU. Um, and what I could do if I want Spell to instead my run my code on a GPU is just tell it that that's the type of machine I want by adding this dash dash mat machine type flag. And the machine type that I'm going to use is K80. Okay, so where does this K80 come from? Well. Uh, if you check out spell.run slash pricing, uh, you'll see uh, some information about uh, how much spell charges for uh, different types of machine types uh, according to your needs for whether this GPU or that CPU is the best for your particular task. Um, so you can see there's a few different ones, CPU, CPU big, you know, all these things, K80. K80 happens to be one of the less expensive GPU units, uh, so it's good enough for my purposes. And that is what I'm going to use. Okay, so I go ahead and run that command. Everything's up to date. It's casting spell number 17. We see a very similar uh, bit of output as we did before as it gets ready to uh, start training the model. Okay, the run is running. So in a moment, we should start seeing the logs after it reads the text file. Take a quick look back at my notes while we wait for that. Uh, so that's cool. All right, all right. So now this this run is running, and I don't know how obvious this is if if you're following along, um, but it's it's actually noticeable at least for me that this is happening a lot faster. Okay, this this model is being trained a lot faster via uh, GPU than the CPU one was. Um, so the CPU one got a head start, but I still expect that the GPU one will actually finish uh, substantially faster. And we see we're already at like 413 out of um, 6,000 uh, iterations that it's going through to train the model. Uh, so like if we check in on the previous one, let's see how far it is. Yeah, actually, okay, no. I mean, the head start ahead was pretty big, uh, but you can see the, the GPU one is, is moving faster. Um, like if we actually go in because, like I mentioned before, I've, I've uh, had a few practice runs here before. Um, we can look at a few ones that I did before. Um, yeah, these were kind of my first two practice runs using a slightly different model you can see here. But uh, this one on CPU took close to five hours, and on GPU it took only a little bit more than 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, so. GPU is faster for this particular use case. OK, so just for the sake of time, um, I'm going to grab a model that uh, I had already trained before, rather than just waiting for this one to go all the way through, um, although we could, we could do that. Maybe we can actually use this model later if people are interested in that. Um, 
but so what I want to do to uh, grab the data from spell is to run this command here. Spell cp runs slash the number of the run uh, slash models. Okay, that's how I'm gonna fetch that data. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna cd up here and now I'm kind of in my uh, like home folder of all the different things that I'm kind of you know grabbing from here and grabbing from there to put together into this uh, demo. I'm gonna go ahead and run spell cp, it was 15, right? Let me just look here again. Yeah, yeah. So you can see this is using that same training LSTM I was talking about. Uh, it completed in about five minutes. So actually, I guess this one should complete pretty quickly too. Uh, and that was, uh, that was a practice run that I did just a few minutes before this live stream started. Uh, so I'm gonna spell cp runs slash 15 slash models. And it's copying 10 files that are from there. Okay, my ls, my ls data. It remembers the same data directory that I passed in before as the name. And these 10 files constitute the model. Okay, I'm not really gonna go into depth about what are these files and what's in them. Um, but yeah, if you're following along, you could poke into them and check it out. Um, cool, so we've trained the model. We've used spell to um, train a LSTM model on a corpus of data that we obtained. And now that we have the model, let's use it for something. Um, so I'm going to borrow and then modify an example from uh, this repository here uh, on the ML5.js GitHub account. They have a repository called ML5 examples. Okay, so there's a whole collection of examples. There's a bunch of them. You can find out a little bit about how it's organized and some other stuff from their readme. I'm gonna use one in the p5.js folder. We are worried about uh, LSTMs. Um, yeah, there's, this interactive one is also interesting. Um, that's more, well, I mean, it's, it's more interactive. I'm not really gonna describe it. We're gonna use the non-interactive version, LSTM text. And we have here just a few files. So they actually have a pre-trained model that I'm gonna just ignore and not use because we're gonna use our model that we just trained instead. But what I am gonna do is just fetch these two files, this HTML file and sketch.js file. And because this repository is big and I just don't really wanna wait um, to clone it, I'm literally just gonna fetch these two files and nothing else, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is just, uh, I'll create another directory, why not? Uh, ML5 LSTM example, and I will change my current directory uh, to be in there. Let me just clear my screen for clarity's sake. And then I'm just gonna use the command line program wget, uh, which will just fetch the raw file. I did have to click raw on GitHub, um, and we'll fetch it into my, onto my local machine. So I do that. And then I go back and I do the same thing with sketch.js, okay? I just find this one raw file, copy the URL, and I use the program wget to download it locally. Okay, so now if I list what's here, I have these two files, index.html and sketch.js. So let's take a minute um, to check out, uh, we'll, we'll read the files themselves and we'll also use them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just run uh, a program called HTTP server, which uh, you could install if you want, if you don't already have it with, what is it, npm install dash g HTTP dash server. Um, you can use, you know, if you're used to using a different web server, uh, anything that will serve up an index.html in your local folder is fine. Um, so it tells me where, tells me the URL that I can go to on localhost to check this out. So I'm gonna go there. It says LSTM text generation example. This example uses a pre-trained model on a corpus of Virginia Woolf, although I'm actually not doing that, so I'll, I might change that. Um, so let's actually go ahead and go into this file and also look at uh, the JavaScript file. Okay, so let me, I'm an Emacs user. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up repos, what do I call it, spell live stream. Okay. Um, so these are the two files that I had just downloaded uh, a moment ago. It's index.html and sketch.js. So let me open those up in a way that's gonna be a little bit more readable for you. Um, 
uh, my notes before were so, well, let me, let me, I guess let me do it over here then. Like the folders don't really bother uh, the video as much as this one does. Okay, um, so we have here an HTML document um, which relies on um, P5 and ML5 as the libraries that are being used, okay, and pretty much nothing else. All right, so this example uses a pre-trained model on a corpus of MF Doom. So let's just make this nice and accurate. Okay, that says the meaning of life is, which isn't something I remember Doom saying, but whatever, we can leave that as the seed text for now. Uh, that's an input field in HTML, so we can just change that anyway. Uh, so we have a few sliders for um, how long we want the output to be in the temperature, which we'll talk about more a little bit later. Uh, and what's really interesting is the sketch.js file. So let's actually take a look there. Okay. Uh, so this is open source software. I can just do whatever I want with it, which is great. Um, okay, so we declare a few variables here. Um, so again, this video isn't about P5. There's kind of a lot of things that I'm touching on and not getting into. Um, but P5 is a really cool library. I encourage you to check it out uh, if you're not familiar with it already. It's great for a lot of artistic coding. I've used it for some other projects as well. Um, so kind of, there's kind of two main functions in, um, well, yeah, let me not really get into P5. Um, so we're going to start with the setup function. Now I'll just tell you that P5 will run this setup function for us at the beginning. Um, and it says create the LSTM generator, passing it the model directory. Okay, so I don't have anything called models slash wolf because I didn't clone that whole repository. So what I need to do is make sure that this, when it's um, generating, uh, like when it's creating the LSTM that we're going to use, I need to make sure that th this is pointing towards the proper path um, where we have our files. So let me go ahead and just remind myself on the command line of where I am keeping everything. Uh, let me just control C out of the server and I'll start it again in a minute. Uh, so let's see, let me ls up here. I have something called data up there, which had what I wanted, right? Yeah, those are the files for my model. So why don't I just copy that folder into here where I am? Oh, I have to say, what is it? Lowercase r or capital R for recursive copy. Uh, I guess lowercase r works. So now when I ls, um, here, besides the two files that I uh, fetch from GitHub using wget, I also have all those data files that are right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to say data, because that's where my data is. Okay. Um, and then here, uh, there's some other code. This is really about the, the user interaction of like what happens um, when sliders uh, get moved around and buttons get clicked. I'm not really going to go over that. Um, what we will just take a minute to look at is this generate function, um, which again, not really going to go all the way through, but uh, it lets you know it's generating stuff, like just so that the user knows something is happening, uh, grabs the input um, from uh, the seed text, uh, it uses these parameters, temperature and length. And then uh, the ML5.js library does really uh, all the heavy lifting for us. We just kind of call this lstm.generate function um, with our data and pass it this callback function, um, which will go ahead and update the DOM, kind of update the HTML page um, when that function is done running, done generating the text that the model has predicted based on the input seed. So you can see this is a pretty short file. I didn't go through every detail, um, but it's on GitHub. You can check it out. You, can, you saw I really just made one small change to it. Um, cool, so let me go back to my notes. I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do next, but it's always good to be sure. Okay, that's the path. Yep, I already told you that. Uh, I did that. All right, so let me actually go ahead and run the server again. Okay, and just refresh the page. You can see it's updated with this. Okay, the model's loaded. I can click generate. And it, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many people will listen to Doom. But if you don't, maybe you can just take my word for it. This sounds a little bit like something that you might say. <laughs> um, so we can adjust uh, the length and make it longer or make it shorter. 
uh, and we can use this temperature thing. Like the temperature is something like um, intuitively, it's kind of like the the randomness of the text. Um, the higher the temperature, uh, the less random it will be. Kind of the more derivative it will be of the original text. Uh, and if you turn it up very high, it starts to become very likely that you get kind of um, direct quotes from the original um, corpus. If it's lower, it is maybe a little bit more uh, chaotic, so to speak. Um, and I think that can generate things that are a little bit more out there and more interesting or original. Um, but if you start to do it maybe too low, um, you might start to get kind of just nonsense. It might not really make very much sense at all, especially if you get like really low. Uh, oh, that's kind of, okay. It, it might or it might not. Um, so yeah, I mean, Okay, I'll, I'll withhold my opinion on, on, these, on these generated lyrics for now. This is an art critique session. Uh, all right. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's really, uh, that's really the main thing. So I mean, if, if I was going to go ahead and like reproduce my original project, what I would do now is pull in another dependency, which is the pronouncing library. Um, and then I would actually, I would have, oh, what I should have done, maybe I can just do this now, is... Um, Train the model backwards. Like if we if we actually look at uh, if we actually look where I put it, yeah. If we actually look at this input.txt, you can see that these lyrics are forward, and so the model does that also. So that's something that I would want to do is um, just reverse that input and train the model backwards. And then I can use the pronouncing thing to go backwards and, and so on. Um, but yeah, I think instead of doing that, I think what make, makes more sense would be for me to take any questions from the people who are on the live stream because um, that is pretty much, uh, yeah, that is pretty much that. So we, we've got through um, what is LSTM, getting data, setting things up, training the model using spell, and then using the model in ML5.js. Um, so that is what I have prepared for you today. And yeah, I look forward to any questions. Cool. I'll, I'll awkwardly come and slide over here next to you. I might have some questions. Um, so first of all, um, I love, I really love that creative solution. I've never thought of this. That, you know, the, it's. I think it's really interesting to realize that the text. Well, the neural network isn't actually like really learning anything about like the meaning of text. Right. We think of it. Oh, it's like machine learning, artificial intelligence. It's like doing what a human being does. Mm -hmm. But it's just learning about the sequence of what characters tend to appear after another. So yeah. it could just it could just as easily learn it backwards or forwards. Yeah, especially so with the original Markov model that I used. I was like, there's there's no especially with Markov models. Like the Markov property in math means that there's no memory. So I was like, right. oh, like. It actually ended up being a very natural yeah. thing to do, but also, yeah, also a little yeah. weird, a little surprising, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the one of the questions that came up is really about like, oh, I know someone noticed that the um, I'm going to make sure my mic is on. Actually, yeah, it's on. Um, that um, one of the that your file size, text file size, was just like 300 kilobytes, which is I think perfect for like a quick demonstration like mm -hmm. this. But have you tried like different things with like? Do you have a sense of like how much data you really need to to um, get like? the results that you might want to get? Yeah, I mean, uh, more data is better, but I mean, right. it really depends on the application. Like um, for for this, like I wanted to make lyrics that sounded like this person. And right. so I got all the data that I could <laughs> about that person. And um, I mean, yeah, 300 kilobytes of, of lyrics is actually a good amount for an artist. Uh, yeah. Jim has been rhyming since before I was born, just yeah. as a random <laughs> fun fact for people. Um, um, but, yeah, yeah. I, I would say generally more is better, right. but uh, it really depends on the application. Right. And I think it also depends on what it is you're trying to generate. So if what you're generating is like two rhyming lines, it's right. sort of like a short thing right. for it to learn. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're like, oh, I want to generate an entire novel, right, you, you would have definitely to want more think data about you know. And that's you know, there, I think I have some videos on Markov models. You could probably get with a small data set pretty much the same results, mm -hmm. but with larger data. Um, the neural network stuff is going to probably produce more surprises and more mm -hmm. kind of creative output. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. All right. Uh, people are writing. Uh, okay. To pull the model from spell, he used spell CP on an already finished run. Is that the same for a fresh run? So what happens if I spell CP while it's still training? I don't know. We could try it. Why, <laughs> well, why I, I'm pretty sure I, can, I somewhat know. One, one thing is we, we might as well, we should check to see if it finished, just to like out yeah. of curiosity. But I think the answer to this is the, um, the, that script, that Python script that we're using, doesn't actually generate the finished model files until it's 
done. So there wouldn't actually be anything, anything there to spell CP. However, most training scripts will generate like in progress versions, like the checkpoints mm -hmm. or like a version of the model in progress. That way, like if it's been running for like days and days and days and it like crashes in the last 10 seconds, you still mm -hmm. have something you can work with. But I think the basic example from the ML5 project, which is based on TensorFlow car RNN, uh, I don't think we're generating those checkpoints. Maybe we are, we probably should. So that's something to add to that project. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, they, they, uh, both of the runs had finished. Oh great, the, yeah, the wow, five. So uh, what was the difference in time? Uh, so the, the GPU run was about, five well, sorry, was about three times faster. faster. Took yeah. five minutes some odd versus 17 minutes some odd on CPU. Yeah, but I think this would, because it's such a small amount of data, that right. difference is less extreme. But you can right. think of it like it's going to, like if, if you had 10 megabyte, megabytes of text or 100 megabytes of text or you're working with an image database, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be the difference not between like, oh, it's just like 10 minutes less. It's gonna be days less or weeks less. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's nice that, um, especially for those of us who work on laptops, that you can, like for these models that take a long time to train, you can start your run and then shut your laptop off, you're offline, you're on the subway, you're doing whatever, um, and right. then finally your, your model finishes and then you can just use it later instead of having to like leave your computer running and it's running on CPU instead of GPU because your laptop yeah. isn't as powerful as these machines that are in these data centers remotely. Right, and Spell um, will send, you can configure it to set, send you a notification. It's not like you have to keep checking. You go to sleep and wake up and see if the notification came in. Um, so when, this is an interesting question. I don't know that there's an easy answer to this, but v Valerio asked tips to avoid generating truncated sentences. So I, in, this, in the ML5 example, I know what it does is it just says like, generate 100 characters. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's very arbitrary where it cuts off. Do you have any, have you, did you, when you did your previous version of the project, was that a consideration of how to figure out like where to end it? Yeah, um, so yeah, I guess, so there's a few things like, I mean, so these LSTM models can be trained uh, by character or by word. Right, right. Um, so if you train by word, um, then you should always be getting words. Right. So that's one thing that you can do. I feel like I did, I did do something. I also did something else. Like, what was it? Um, Oh, well, this is the Python version that yeah. I have. I mean, uh, one thing you could try probably is just like, like if you know you want about 100 characters, you could ask for 150 characters, mm -hmm. and then you could use a regular expression or yeah. some type of logic to like look and find a nicer point to end. Mm -hmm. um, also though, in theory, if you're training off of, s the data set is song lyrics, and it has, um, like line breaks in it, mm -hmm. like the line break is a character that the model will learn. Right. So it would actually generate things and with the line breaks in them. So it also depends on like how you format that training data and generate right. it. Right. Yeah, I feel like I haven't noticed too much of it getting cut off, but maybe I just haven't looked. Yeah, like I, I think I think I just I think I literally just use a regular expression to cut right. it off at the space. Um, yeah. Um, so one other question that somebody asked earlier, which I will answer because I emailed the folks at Spell and they gave me the answer, but Mike asked in the chat, how would you g use Spell with JavaScript? So in this, in this uh, live stream today, what Nabil showed us was a Python script that's running on the Spell cloud computer. We switched over later to JavaScript to be able to execute the model in the browser to make an interactive thing, but the actual training was in Python. And that's pretty typical. Most machine learning, training systems, things you'll find will be in Python, or they might be something like Torch is a thing, and there's other like, you know, kind of scientific computing languages and platforms for doing machine learning. However, you might want to run like a Node script. Node is a JavaScript uh, framework for doing server-side programming and other stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and there is actually TensorFlow has JavaScript TensorFlow and now a version of JavaScript TensorFlow that runs in Node. So mm -hmm. uh, what the Spell folks wrote to me is that there's a argument which is um, dash dash apt. We could probably find oh. it on the, in the documentation somewhere, dash dash apt. And that's where you can tell it which, so we didn't have to install like TensorFlow as a dependency because I think Spell like includes those automatically. Yes. I think maybe in Yining's live stream from before, she might have had to add an additional dependency. Mm -hmm. But if you if you use, you can configure the Spell command. Uh, so just say dash dash apt space node, and then it's going to know like, oh, I need to use node for this. And I'll put a link in the video's description to like where that is in the documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can actually run pretty much anything. Like you can tell Spell like run echo, oh, right? Hello world, and like. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can just say yes, yeah. And then it'll just yeah. Anything just do this. that you can type into the 
console or terminal or shell prompt on your computer, you can run instead of on your computer on the Spell platform. Mm -hmm. Actually, by the way, the other thing that I know people would, like this is what always happens on this, uh, when I do these YouTube live streams, you do this really super interesting like example about neural networks and training text and people are just talking about what text editor is that? People are very impressed that they're using <laughs> Emacs, which yes, I have I, never I, used, I, I never <laughs> used, uh, and it's uh, just not something that I like, I didn't really sort of like learn by, uh, you know, I learned programming by actually like using Director, Macromedia Director, so I was so like far on the other spectrum of like interface. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's pretty great to see that and actually like see you working with it, how efficient it is. Yeah, yeah, I have, I've been using Emacs for a long time. It takes it takes an investment, like to be honest, I don't know if I would recommend other people <laughs> start using it, but uh, if you yeah. have time to, to learn it, uh, it's, it is really nice that it integrates really nicely with um, Python and JavaScript and like, a million other languages, and I keep um, most of my notes using the Emacs org mode right. format, which like lets me do this nice outline stuff right. and stuff like that. Great. All right. Well, I think. Uh, um, all right. Well, one, I was going to be like, oh, we're done. But there is one more question. Can the model copy the exact lyrics in the data set? That's an interesting question. Um, it. I mean, it can. I don't know if we'd want it to. Right. Um, I mean. The more, the higher the temperature is, the more likely it would be. Um, yeah, I think the, the point here really, I mean, you you might have a different conceptual idea for why you want to use this model, and right. but you know, it, what we're, I think what Nabil is demonstrating is the idea of like having the model generate something that is similar in style, substance to the original lyrics, but not the same. But certainly probability wise, it. You know, there's some we could compute this probably. There's some likelihood that a line that's going to generate is going to actually be the exact line from the lyrics. But there's so many possible computations and right. permutations that probably it's not that likely that that would happen. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I agree. Um, cool. Okay, so um, I think we're going to wrap up. Wow, this was amazingly efficient. A one-hour live stream never <laughs> happens. Uh, we only had like a few technical glitches. Thank you for being oh, accommodating. Yeah, um, definitely, especially because of the audio problems we had earlier. I will make. It'll probably be ready sometime next week, a kind of edited version of this, so you can be on the lookout. This, the, but this archive of what we did just now will be available immediately after I press this button, turning it off. So you can watch this back. Um, uh, and then I will also go ahead and I can get the notes from Nabil and put everything in the description. So if you're looking for what are all the commands and what are all the URLs, you know, especially like I think a lot of people I could see in the chat, like the idea of a recurrent neural network is a totally new concept. So the readings that Nabil suggested earlier would be great references for you to look at just to get an understanding of like what the pieces are and how things are working. So stay tuned for that. You can always ask more questions later in the comments. Um, and I will also uh, be back this afternoon because I've been doing a series on making Mastodon bots. <laughs> so I have, I have one where I want to show how to um, run a processing sketch to generate an image to post that image to a Mastodon bot. So um, look for that around probably 3.30 p.m., 4 o'clock today for an hour or so. Of course, it'll be much longer than an hour because it'll take <laughs> way longer. It's very efficient. Well, Brad, so thank you so much to be oh, no, for being here. To be here. To be um, here. Awesome for you to be here. Great to see another example of like training with Python and then bringing you to the JavaScript. Super exciting. So um, I'm the, I, I was saying this earlier, like I don't have any good system for this. So now I'm going to go to this web page here. Oh, the camera went off. Perfect timing. So uh, <laughs> I'll turn it back on just so we can wave goodbye in a right. friendlier fashion. And then I'm going to hit the stop streaming button and we'll be done for the day. All right. Um, All right, well, thanks everyone for yeah. watching. Thanks again, Spell, for sponsoring. Thank you, yeah. And if you haven't, if you want to try this, you can go to spell.run slash coding train, and that's where you can start signing up for an account. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>